It was an incident that shook the nation. The explosion killed at least 13 people and injured more than 100. It also leveled several buildings in the area. It has rendered many residents of Apiate homeless. Government has so far sent relief items and other support services to the affected victims. It has also, through the Lands and Natural Resources Ministry, suspended the license of the mining services contractor, Maxim Ghana Limited, following the incident. The chief mining inspector of the Mining Regulator, Minerals Commission, has also been interdicted. In a yet-to-be-aired interview on the point of view, the Lands and Natural Resources Minister, Samuel Jinapo, has been explaining the rationale behind decisions taken after the blast. When it is said that there was escort, what is the nature of the escort? We need to know. I mean, that's one fundamental question or issue that we need to resolve. What is the nature of the escort? There was a policeman in the explosive vehicle or was there a vehicle leading the explosive vehicle? These are all nitty-gritties we have to iron out. And what does the law require? And, and uh, I'm even already beginning to form the opinion that perhaps we have to take a second look at the law. Because uh, what is the nature of the vehicle which should be used to transport explosives mm. and so on and so forth. So there are fine details which have to be resolved. But what is important and what is fundamental, and I need to point that out, is that we establish the facts honestly and establish the facts in a manner that uh, uh, those facts are reasonably unimpeachable, incontrovertible. In a latest twist, initial findings by a committee set up by the Lands Ministry have cited Maxim Ghana Limited subletting the transportation of the explosive to a different company, Josidek Logistics Limited. They have also had their license suspended. The specific regulation which comes to play forcefully is LI-2177, which is the LI which regulates uh, the use of explosives for mining, you, you know, and, and which is why I've had to take the steps to uh, give instructions for the chief inspector of mines to be, in, to be in interdicted, and which is why I've had to take steps to get the explosive company, the company that manufactures these explosives to be interdicted. In fact, I just found out this morning when the preliminary report was presented to me by the Minerals Commission that the company which was responsible for the manufacture of these explosives also subcontracted the transportation of the explosives to another company. Wow. Okay. So uh, the Magzam, Magzam company, Magzam company is the manufacturer of the explosives. The company which was responsible for the transportation of the explosives was Josidek Company Limited also. So I've since given another instruction, another uh, instruction to the Minerals Commission to suspend the registration of this company and preclude it from the transportation of explosives until mm. the investigations are concluded. So uh, this is a distinction that I have to draw very clearly. The, the health and safety of mining mm. and mine support services falls within the four corners of the Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources. And of course, at some stage, we need to conduct an inquiry into the broader issue of health and safety protocols of the mining industry generally. Players in the mining sector say the suspension of the license of Maxim Ghana Limited will be detrimental to their operations since it is a key distributor of explosives to most of them. They have warned of dark consequences. One wonders if the ministry is being too harsh. The reason why this decision was taken primarily was so that, you know, we are not grouping in the dark. We are not taking a leap in the dark so that we understand the issues at the base level. Minister, an incident like this is happening. The company that was responsible for the manufacture of these explosives, you allow them to continue to work. What if a day or two after you, you receive reports that a similar incident is happening somewhere? How are you going to answer that? So the responsible thing to do in circumstances like this is that you put a halt to the operations of that company. So you don't get a recurrence of that situation until such time that you are reasonably satisfied that even if you were to leave the ban or you were to leave the suspension, you will not have an immediate or a further recurrence of this incident. So that's the reason for it. In any event, the company is not given the nature of the investigations. Uh, the company does not have the uh, uh, potential 
Okay, the company does not have the potential to interfere with the investigations because this is an investigation being conducted by state institutions into a, the activities or the operations of a private company. So one can reasonably conclude that this company cannot interfere with the investigations. But the real rationale, the reason for taking that decision is because we don't have a recurrence of that incident.